We live in the future, so we're told. And uh, one of those ways that we live in the future is our phones do more than ever. There are cameras that I'm filming on right now. They provide us access to all kinds of things, internet, webs, all that. I sound like a boomer right now, but phones are amazing. One of the things they're starting to do, particularly in higher tech electric cars, not exclusively though, is act as a key. And if you're a Tesla owner of a Model 3 or a Model Y, this will be all too familiar to you, where you've used Tesla's phone app uh, with Bluetooth as a car key. But if you're not, or if you are, and you're just curious about how that works, some of the downsides of it, I'm going to do an interesting experiment today where my Polestar supports the phone as key functionality through Bluetooth as well on their app. There's several ways of actually implementing having a car you can unlock and lock without a key. Uh, Polestar also uses Bluetooth like Tesla. So today, I'm going to leave my keys at home. And I'm just going to get in my car with the phone, hope everything works, go for a coffee run because I'm, you know, needing some caffeine and we'll see how that does. Does the car work reliably? What's the experience like? And how, what are the general security precautions to know with different ways different cars implement it? I'm going to tell you all that and more, so stay tuned. Already, uh, I didn't actually intentionally do this, but it turns out a Model 3 is parked here, by the way. That's one of the other mainstream cars with no keys. Really cool. Um, that car, by the way, gives you a credit card as a backup. My car does have that key fob you saw earlier, but it's not in my pockets. I'll prove it to you. This pocket's empty. I am carrying a house key because I have a unfortunately non-smart lock like a neanderthal for those of you fortunate enough to have a smart lock with biometric authentication like facial or uh you know fingerprint based you could probably leave your home on errands if you have a car that also uh phone keys keyless with just your phone no keys nothing in this pocket so basically pockets are empty and moment of truth i'm recording right now i actually don't know while recording like i I think it uses Bluetooth Low Energy, and I have no idea with iOS, with an iPhone, maybe it's different with Android. This functionality also works on Android through Bluetooth, but does that actually work while recording? I don't know. Uh, let's see. There should be proximity sensors. Wow, it does unlock, so that worked pretty quick too. I've noticed that time to time, it tends to have a delay, even in the Model 3 and Model Y. Tesla has the most reliable phone key by far that I've seen. This isn't mine, by the way. It just happens to conveniently be parked here. But um, their phone key works really well. Love their app. But even with their app, it's not always 100% reliable. I'm going to talk a little bit more later in this video about phone key reliability and another concern I have, which is security. So on a Model 3, the phone key, sorry, the card back up. You can see there's a little camera there. You actually put the card to that camera in a backup and a fail safe. What to do if the car runs at a battery, it's a little more complicated. I'll get into that. For something like the Polestar, again, I have the key fob. That key fob, I might insert a clip here, has a physical key in there. And I believe somewhere in the driver door uh, is hidden a mechanical, I probably should know where it is, but I don't. I think somewhere in here there is a um, fail safe in case the car runs in a battery and you need a mechanical key to get in, uh, which is always a solution if like the car runs in a battery or the key does that I should say. Anyhow, no key, pockets are empty, just me and my phone. We're going to go and get some coffee and uh, hopefully I don't get stranded. Hopefully this continues to work. Two things I really like about my car in particular, one of which applies to just about most modern cars, some even gas cars. One is with the Polestar 2, I just get in and the car is ready to drive. I literally sit in the seat and like screens turn on. There's no start button to like actually turn on the high voltage battery and let me drive. Uh, just go, just like a Tesla. Tesla does this too, so does Volvo, of course, Polestar sister brand. Uh, Rivian does it. Uh, I don't remember, I think Lucid does it as well. So kind of like the upstart brands, the hip kids, they get it. A lot of other manufacturers don't seem to and still put a start stop button, which I don't get. I mean, I think this model of the weight sensor in your seat, just a driver's in the car and there is a nearby key, whether it be a fob or a phone or whatever, like let me use the car at that point. I don't know, that's my little niggle, but I love that this car lets me do that. The other thing is preconditioning. It's a hot day today. I actually started remote preconditioning from the Polestar app. Tesla does this as well. And a lot of legacy car makers actually do this through their own apps of varying quality and reliability. Like Chevy will let you do it with OnStar, but you have to pay them a subscription. Polestar, Tesla, doesn't work that way. Same thing with Rivian. Again, the upstart brands seem to get it. They understand that this is like a core feature that people want. 
and they just give it to you. It's included with the car, right? It's part of the car, uh, essentially, or part of what comes with the car. Other brands like Chevy and Hyundai and like most of the legacy brands seem to be in this mindset of, oh, we can collect subscription revenue and like they're gonna charge you a monthly subscription for, in my opinion, very stupid basic features like that. I'm all in support of car makers having subscriptions for things like cellular connectivity, maps in the car, things like that. I can understand that more so, but the functionality of like remote unlocking or locking or proximity locking, unlocking with Bluetooth, and then preconditioning with climate control. I mean, come on, that should be basic. That's my little rant in here. Let's get back to the topic of phone as a key. So I'm in the car. I should be able to just shift into drive. Uh, well, in this case, reverse, because I have to reverse first. And yep, I can shift in reverse. And to prove it to you, I am moving backwards. See that in the frame? It's moving. I'm moving. Anyhow, I'm not going to film myself driving because I like to be a safe driver, but looks like I'm off to the races. You can see here, I am successfully in. I can't frame that, but you might be able to see I'm in drive. So I'm in drive. I'm going to uh, hit the road and I'll be with you shortly. And hopefully I don't get stranded. If I do, I'll let you know because that would be very bad. Uh, but hopefully I make it to my coffee run. Uh, this is a good kind of other coffee test. Kyle does his test with plug-in hybrids to see if the electric only range can make it for a coffee run, if it's livable. Uh, I do this test without a key to see, can I not get stranded? So I'm a little scared, but it has been pretty reliable in the Polestar. So hopefully this works. Okay, pardon the AC noise, minute to my destination. Still, again, nothing in my pockets, nothing at all, except for my house key. But um, car's in drive, so let's put it in park. Um, and yep, still don't have my key still everything seems to work just fine something i should mention some people leave their keys in their car you never should do that but um one advantage right of those traditional systems with a key fob is that the car can tell usually not always but when the key is inside or outside the vehicle so it's not prevent you from locking yourself out of the car by when you have the key inside I don't know about bluetooth energy in the phone i don't think it can do that so if you're depending on your phone as your key Never, I would say, leave your phone in the car and then walk out and lock the car. You might just end up with yourself stuck. Um, there might be a fail safe to that. Maybe your vehicle is better, but honestly, I wouldn't risk it. Uh, another situation I want to talk about is where does this make sense? Like, why would you want to do this? Uh, so I think, you know, I'm an athlete. So sometimes when I work out or go to the gym or run, I want to carry as few things as possible. So having just the phone, no keys, you know, no even wallet, I can use Apple Pay. I mean, it's really nice just have being minimal in that way. Uh, but let's say I need to take my car to get somewhere, you can do that. And with electric cars, this makes a lot of sense. Of course, this feature has existed for a while, but I think it blends in so perfectly with the around town electric car experience where you're just going from errand to errand, you know, that quiet startup because you don't have an engine. It's just very seamless, very easy, especially in a car like the Polestar or like the Tesla or Rivian, etc. Those cars that have no start stop button, here I am in park. Um, looks like the no cyclists or cars coming my way. So I'm gonna open the door and, you know, just get out of my car. It's good to go. I can use the lock feature. Your car might have a proximity lock or unlock like Tesla's do where you walk away and it automatically locks. Uh, my car, I have to press uh, the button, basically. There are sensors on all four doors on my car, which is nice. So I can unlock it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, okay, so in that situation, I had to use the driver door. I'm not sure why that is. Normally, I can unlock or lock from any of the four doors. But again, behavior is going to probably be a little more finicky, a little less reliable whenever you're using your smartphone as your key. I would never advise this on long-term road trips uh, or just, you know, all the time. But for quick errands where you're running out of the house and you have another way to get in your house, maybe you live in a nice neighborhood, you can leave your house unlocked, or you have the smart lock, you know, and you're just, you want to get your errands done quickly. This can make a lot of sense, but don't depend on it because, you know, sometimes I don't think it works, uh, but I should be able to lock my car. Uh, yep, car's locked. And so I'm going to do my air and get my coffee. And hopefully when I come back, my car unlocks. While I'm going to get my coffee, let's talk about situations where this may not work. Your phone's at a battery. That's the most immediate thing I can think of. Bluetooth-based uh, systems like Tesla, Polestar, Lucid, Rivian, none of those are going to work, unfortunately, because your phone needs to have battery. So that's something to keep in mind. Always keep a charger in your car. That's always an option. Wireless chargers come in many cars nowadays, or just stick a you know lightning cable or USB-C cable if you have an Android phone, so you can always charge your uh, phone in your car, assuming you are in your vehicle. Another big thing uh, is 
the issue of specifically Tesla's, right, Model 3 and Model Y, there's no mechanical way. So if the car battery is dead, you're kind of screwed. You need to basically jump the 12 volt, or I think now it's a 16 volt lithium ion battery, but you need to basically jump the starter battery of the Tesla so it can wake up and recognize the key card. The phone at that point is going to be down. Another thing about these phone based services is they're online. So it's a good security measure, Polestar, Tesla, etc. They all kind of require verification. What that means is, well, yes, your phone needs to be nearby you also need to be actively logged into the app and their servers need to be up importantly so i've got notifications like the other week polestar was doing service on the back end and as a result the phone key was going to be down they gave a notification a heads up about that but i would always check that another reason you can't necessarily rely on this technology for security reasons i think it's good that it has to authenticate online and you know be always connected in that sense but that does mean that unlike a key fob it's not local it does need that server to be up so tesla sometimes has had issues even though they typically are the most reliable uh rivian has had many issues with their phone key i know i've heard a lot of complaints about it so different manufacturers have different levels of competence with it but no one is 100 percent reliable and a key fob with a mechanical key backup is I think still the best solution for cars that offer it. However, again, this is a convenience and conveniences don't always offer 100% reliability. It just needs to be reliable enough in my view. All right, got my coffee, everything's good there. Let's get nerdy about one more detail because some cars don't actually use Bluetooth, but they do have a phone key system. They actually use a better technology. They use a combination of two technologies called NFC and ultra wideband. So NFC, just to recap, that's near field communication. You probably use that if you've ever done contactless payment with a card, with your phone. That's pretty standard, pretty normal at this point. That's kind of basically you hold your phone up, car unlocks. Uh, ultra wideband is actually more traditional than you may think. It's really the same system as your actual car keys. It's just a pretty secure, pretty long range method. Uh, you know, works across a parking garage of unlocking, locking, sending data. It's very secure. So the recent phones, I think like Samsung phones, Google Pixels on the Android side, recent iPhones, I think iPhone 11 and newer, have a chip that enables this ultra wideband communication and a feature called car key. Apple calls it literally car key because they're Apple, that's how they name things. Uh, Google calls it like Android smart key or digital key or something. But if you have a phone that supports it, unfortunately you also need a car that supports it. And currently very, very few cars do. I believe like the uh, very new models of the Mercedes E-Class for a few years now, BMW has been the longest time supporter of it in certain models of their cars. A lot of obviously, you know, luxury BMW cars, both gas and electric support the feature. Hyundai, uh, Genesis, and Kia have all said they're interested. I don't know about the current status. They have their own smart systems again, that I think work over Bluetooth, but in terms of their compatibility with ultra wideband and NFC technology, I don't know. So what are the benefits of the technology over Bluetooth, like what Tesla and everyone else seems to use? Well, it's more secure, it's more reliable, and theoretically, let's say your phone battery dies, that's gonna be a fail safe because you're still gonna be able to unlock your car at least for a few hours after your phone's dead. If you've ever used the you know Apple Pay Transit feature, it's similar where basically, right, that RFID profile is locked to your phone, it's passive, so for a few hours after the battery dies, your phone still has memory of that kind of uh, handshake chip with the car. So when it's very close to the car, it does have to be close, uh, to wherever you unlock, lock your car, that handle is, if you are very close, it can send a signal even a few hours after your phone battery dies. Super cool, very reliable technology. And then of course the ultra wideband component of it is useful because it frankly has a way longer range than Bluetooth. So if you're in a parking garage and you're trying to find your car and you're further than 30 feet away from it, uh, you're out of luck if you don't have cellular, right? With a Tesla, a Polestar, you could, if you have cellular, use their app and then connect that way. But it's so nice just having it built in to the functionality of the phone, that line of sight with ultra wideband technology. So hopefully that wasn't too nerdy, but that's just an explanation of basically promising upcoming technologies with some of the vehicles we're seeing it in. So to recap, several BMW models in the last few years, I think the vast majority of the new ones since 20, I wanna say 2021 model year and newer, uh, and then we're talking Mercedes E-Class, the very newest ones, at least in Europe, have just seemed to get the update. Uh, and then Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis models, I think model year like 22 or newer, with, again, an update needed to enable that. So 
if you have experience with your car, if you know it works with one of these features, ultra wideband or whatever, or it's an exception or what I've said in this video, please leave a comment because I don't know every details in every car. This is just what I've been able to research today looking it up, but hopefully that helps. Anyhow, I'm almost back to my car. So moment of truth, let's see if I can get in. There it is. I'm really hoping this works. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Like I've just offhandedly left my key, you know, like on a table somewhere, tried. Sometimes it works instantly. Other times it seems to be a little unreliable. So I'm gonna set my coffee down. Really hope that doesn't spill. And let's try to unlock it. See if that works. Wow, there we go, it's unlocked. So that means I should be able to get in and drive it. Of course, I'll confirm with the clip. Other cool thing with the Pulsar 2, of course, is I can use that kick sensor, just unlock the trunk. And that should work, right? Because recognize my phone. Super cool, love that. So everything seems to work. Today is a good day for the phone key. But as I said earlier in this video, there are many stipulations on that promising and very futuristic technology. I'm in the car. Seems like it's gonna let me shift into the drive gears, right? I can go into reverse, do all that. So let me go back into park, but everything works. That's cool, so I'm gonna get home. One more kind of recommendation I have for the systems like my car and the Teslas, right, that use Bluetooth with that app is um, if this system isn't reliable or isn't working for you, which it can from time to time be, sometimes it's actually more reliable, believe it or not, to go into the app. Let me overlay a screenshot right now of what that looks like. Go into your car's app and unlock it remotely, quote unquote. Uh, basically send a signal to the server from the app instead of relying on your phone's Bluetooth connection. Sometimes, believe it or not, that's more reliable. Or you can restart the car's, uh, the actual automaker app, you know, force quit it on your phone, start it up again, restart your phone, turn off Wi-Fi, turn it back on, same thing for Bluetooth. These are the common troubleshooting steps I like to do if you are SOL, don't have a phone key fob or an actual key fob and you just have your phone. But anyhow, that's been my experience with, uh, you know, keyless in the Polestar 2. Honestly, when I first got the car, this system was pretty unreliable. It seems to, I don't know if it's placebo, but like it actually seems to have been gotten better over the last few updates. So that's been super exciting to see. I hope Rivian starts out their key system uh, with their phone um, because, you know, I know the key fob with Rivian, it's cool. It's a carabiner and it's cool, but you're not always going to want that. So I do love these electric vehicles and newer, higher tech cars coming with this functionality. Um, I'd be interested to see also more cars adopt what Genesis and Hyundai have done with the biometric system, building in fingerprint sensors to the car. As long as that data is, you know, stored locally, kept in the car, kept to really good privacy standards, we can't always trust automakers with that. But as long as it is, um, I would really be curious to see that because then we live in a world where you could wake up in the woods, let's say something happened, I don't know, but you see your car, you don't have a phone or anything on you, you can just get in just by being you and, you know, having a biometric authentication the same way you unlock your phone. So that itself would be really cool. In the meantime, I think as a intermediary, the phone is key solution makes sense. It's not something I would always rely on, but it's a feature I'm glad I have in my car. Uh, I would encourage you to experiment with it safely in your car. Uh, always have a backup option, but hopefully this has been helpful. Please comment the experience of your car. If you have interesting keyless, you know, experiences with your car, uh, electric or otherwise, um, let us know in the comments. I really honestly am legitimately curious to hear. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Out of Spec Guide. I've been Max and I'll see you in the next video.